Hey, how are you? I'm Mel. You're catching me tonight. Makeup free, sans a little bit of lipstick, a whole lot of flushed cheeks from the heat from doing this video over and over and over again, trying to get it right for you and being interrupted by dogs, pianos, pair, you know, my spouse. It's just been really crazy. So you're getting this kind of in the dark tonight, but it is what it is. And I think sometimes you just need to be real in this space. And you're going to see that with me. I've got laundry, but my bed is made laundry, but my bed is made. And so I'm going to get into this. You might've seen on Instagram, I'm at Mel by Grace and I did depot um, some hourglass palettes and I did some rearrange. This is my rearranged hourglass palette. This is the 2021 holiday palette. And this shade here was a vibrant pink, which was just not me. Maybe it's me in the summer, but it isn't me all of the time. And so I wanted to rearrange because I wanted to know, can I rearrange butterfly, elephant, and tiger? Because I really want a little bit from each of those, but I don't want all of any of them. And so if I could rearrange them without damaging them, then that would be a good incentive to me to purchase those palettes, use what I like, and then pass on what doesn't work for me or put items that are too light for me or too dark for me into my kit. The new packaging is metal and it is definitely bulky, but it is protective. The old packaging and this one I would am not depotting, but this is the Ghost Unlocked. And it is not dirty, but it is scratched up because this has been with me all over the world. This is my favorite. Ghost Unlocked is the palette that I use all the time. But when eventually this shade, which is actually broken and it is down to the pan, when that highlight shade is completely gone, I will probably depot just that shade and put a new shade in just to keep using that palette. So, so many great memories from one of my best friends. Really love that palette. You can actually take Hourglass out and it will still be a little heavier because they are all baked on a terracotta tile. So all Hourglass products, you may not know this, I didn't until I was getting into it, but they are baked on an art tile. And so this art tile, they're put out and then all of the Hourglass um, goop, I guess, that turns into blush, highlight, bronzer, and everything else gets put onto the tiles and they get baked and then they get put into all of the palettes with a little bit of glue. So the point here is to use heat to release the glue, but we don't want to remove too much to where we damage the packaging. But I want to clarify one thing. I said that there aren't very many brands of palettes that are deep enough for these domed powders, and that is still true, but I found another one that does work, and that is Adept Cosmetics. Their makeup palettes do have enough depth for these domed powders. Another brand that is good I've heard is Makeup Forever, but I haven't tried it personally. And then another one that I know is good for a fact is Myo, M-Y-O. And you can look up Myo Cosmetics and you can look into the tall box or even the medium box. But if you plan on depotting more domed shades, I would use the Myo Tall. Sorry for knocking over lipstick there. So without further ado, let's get into the depotting. And I oh wanted to tell you one more thing I just realized. So I did say that the larger palettes, um, larger pans fit into the Makeup Geek palette. And here I have a Buxom shade that the same method actually works for these Buxom um, blushes. And I had ruined the packaging but was still using my Seychelles. So I've put it in here with, so I've got an hourglass finishing powder, an hourglass bronzer, an Ofra highlight and Seychelles, the blush from Buxom. Really nice. I know the color's not great in here tonight, but on my papers that I use for usage, you can see that little smear because this is actually touching. So I wanted to let you know that these powders don't actually fit in the Makeup Geek palette in their larger size. Medium and large do not fit, but the small still do. And this is just a little tin box that I mentioned in the video that I used magnets and then put everything into a tin box. And then the lid can just go on top and I can very lightly store all of my like switcheroo hourglass powders. So these are all mag 
um, magnets on the back so that all five of those blushes, which includes this one, I could just switch out depending on my mood or I can give them away to other people. That is what I did with all of this, but I wanted to clarify the makeup geek because I don't want you to pick up the wrong thing. In the very beginning, you're going to see that I'll do one really quickly because I'm just going to show those of you who just want to see it fast and then I get into the same thing a little bit longer. So I hope this is fun. I hope you enjoy and I will see you in the next one. Bye. Try the wrong way. So these are X-Acto knives. They came together in a set from Amazon. Some of them are really pointy, but for this purpose, you're going to want the straightest edge that you can find. Slide it in to give you a nice straight palette knife sort of a situation. Screw those down. There we go. All right, so we have a very straight edge palette knife that we have put together. It's actually an X-Acto knife, but we're going to use this as a palette knife. And I want to show you the very thin nature of this. It's really thin compared to a depotting tool. And this is a thin depotting tool. This is the thinnest depotting tool I've ever been able to find. Really thin depotting tool, and this is maybe a quarter of the thickness. And then this depotting tool is also really thin. You can see it's a bit bent up from years of depotting, but again, this is still more thin. So I would typically recommend a depotting tool, but in this situation, I'm gonna tell you a very good straight edge tool like this is gonna give you exactly what you need. Make sure it's screwed in nice and tight so that it doesn't fly out and injure you. So you're gonna want this. I like to have a black Sharpie, super fine point, ultra fine point to write the name. And then you have two methods once you decant or depot in this situation. There are actually three methods of rearranging. And I'm gonna go over all three, but the first option is to get a metal sticker like this. And you can get these on Amazon. And then you peel the backing off and you stick the backing on the back of the blush. You can see right here, I've got a magnet on the back of these and I'm gonna show you why. That's the second option. And then the third option is you can actually just take uh, lash glue and re-adhese whatever pan you want into the palette. So if you're going to rearrange but keep it that way, I recommend the lash glue. It's super easy and you can change your mind later but it's easy to remove. If you're going to want to ever rearrange in the future, I recommend if you're using the hourglass um, metal palettes that you use a magnet on the back because you need a magnet to stick to this metal tin. But if you're going to use an empty magnetic palette, something like this, you're going to want to use a metal sticker. And I'll show you right here. This does not stick. This will just is just sliding down because it's magnet on magnet where this is going to just stick in very easily. Now let's talk about hourglass in its shape. So these are my favorite um, for any kind of depotting, but they do not fit the hourglass um, packaging. You can see before I've even closed it that it sits too tall and it's going to squish this product if I use this. So no Trish McAvoy. Sydney Grace also doesn't work. What does work though is Makeup Geek. Makeup Geek um, palettes were always just a little bit deeper and I believe Makeup Forever are also. So you can put them in here and then these I've used a metal circle. So just make your decision on that. I am going to be using magnets for mine and these are two are going to be converted to magnets and then I actually have a little metal box that came with maybe tweezers or something from Amazon and this tin which actually will eventually be a box um, I have the box too I'm going to just put each of these um, into here and then I can rearrange as I see fit so those are the ways that you can reattach things then a couple of other things that I have you don't have to have but this is the best Perry and Spirit, it's like a little makeup artist secret. But nothing cleans brushes as good as this. 
and it also takes sticky stuff labels and anything sticky right off of anything so just so you know this is great I use this for my brushes in between cleanings and it works really well on synthetic and on natural hair but also great for stickiness and then I like a microfiber rag to just keep everything a little bit cushioned and avoid breakage this is my little trick for hourglass this is a small heater it's from Jamberry I used it when I used to do those nail stickers. I think a lot of us did those. So this is the little heater from that. I use it to heat my eyelash curler normally, but I'm also using it for this project. So pretty cool. You could also use a blow dryer and you could also use a small heater of other varieties. The reason I like this is because I will show you these palettes open up and they rest easily on top. And then you can turn on the heater. Wait three to five minutes remove and then you can take your palette knife and you can go to town so whatever heating source you choose I recommend that you use a low airflow and then use a low heat and work your way up as you figure out what's going to work for you so that's what I recommend on the hourglass palette this is the first one that I did this is the ghost quad and I thought it would I would risk it on here first and so I'm going to show you on here how I did this and you can see I did nick it from using the wrong shaped tool and also rushing too quickly so really give this time don't rush through it's probably going to take five to ten minutes on heat to get where you want to be so turn on your heater lay it on top if it's smaller you might have to hold it if it's metal it might also heat up I'm going to show you one on plastic and I'll show you one on metal. So you're going to let it heat and I'm going to time lapse this. Turn off the heat. Use your palette knife. Find the widest opening, which for me is right here on the bottom. Slide this in between the terracotta and the plastic and give it a lift. Now, if it is moving slightly, you're good. And then did you see that it just gave? If it is not moving, you need to reheat it. And then you won't have any damage. You can pull it right out and you have a perfect little blush baby that you can put into a palette. So let me show you this again, not hurried up. Let's do it the slow version. And so you can really see what we get. This one is actually a little bit of a quick cheater because it already has its magnet on the back. So we're gonna just stick this in the Makeup Geek. And again, I am going to be switching all of these to the magnets instead of the metal. So if you're doing an eyeshadow palette, typically your individual eyeshadows would be a tin, which is why I started with that. But for these metal palettes and rearranging the metal, this is metal, very heavy duty, very nice. And so you're going to want to use a magnet instead. So Let's go ahead and go. I don't want to do anything to this because I love this one. So I'm not going to rearrange that or do anything with it. I'm very sentimental about it. What I think I'm going to do, I'm trying to decide if I want to put this one into like a kit. Probably not because I don't have anything else this size. And then I have this one. Those are the larges. This is the medium size. But these aren't gonna these are too tall for other things too and you can see I nicked this one previously and I also melted the back I tried using heat on these before uh, like using a flat iron kind of a situation and it melted the plastic on the back where the heater going this way I'll just show you it doesn't melt the plastic so we're just gonna do that we're gonna leave it here I've already basically come close to ruining this one, so let's just leave it here. And I think what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna do the soft light, because this has radiant light, soft light, and golden bronze light. So we're just gonna kind of center it, make sure it sits there, and we're going to give it some time. So let me get a timer. So let's just do a stopwatch. Obviously we know this is like 30 seconds short. 
So I'm just going to stick the stopwatch right here. Okay. I hope this whole thing wasn't blurry. I've refilmed it like 12 times and I'm just noticing that it redid everything, but I've got the steps watch going and I'm going to go for with the heater on I'm going to go for three minutes once I go for three minutes then I'm going to stop and check it out and see where we're at and in the meantime while it's doing its thing because on this particular one I know it doesn't fit in any of the palettes so this one I am going to make a sticker for it that is a metal sticker so for a metal sticker I'm going to use this tool. This is a tool for doing vinyl. It's like a flocking, I think it's called a flocking tool. And it lets you like pull off the extra little piece. This isn't sticky. And we're gonna say right here. Radiant light. Probably would have been better to move this to the side. And I want to show you a little trick as well with Parian Spirit. Parian Spirit is an amazing melter of all things sticky. So I'm going to use a little dish. And then just make sure it's really clean. I'm using the Parian Spirit to clean it first just because I want to keep everything sanitary. Then I'm going to put some Parian Spirit in here. We're at two minutes. So let's start. Let's go ahead and try it and see. So you can actually take your tool in Parian Spirit and you can drip this and it'll kind of go in and back and it won't hurt the terracotta. So we're going to just, I'm going to make sure you can see what I'm doing. Because I only have so many of these. If I don't get it right, I can't just keep refilming. I don't want to break the palette knife. I'm going to show you if I were to use... This is a little bit of a sturdier palette knife. This actually fits. It normally doesn't. These normally don't fit. So... I wish I had like a little hook. And we're going to move over to another spot. And I'm holding the pan. I'm not just holding it by this where then this part will break off the whole lid. I'm holding the pan here pretty firmly. Because did you hear that creak? You can actually break your pan. Which if you're trying to rearrange, which is what I want to be able to do, that's not what you want. So now I'm going to go to this outside edge because this is really tight. We're going to switch back. Did you hear that glue? I'm sure you can hear my daughter on the piano. A little bit more parry and spirit. And we've got really good lifting. Oh, and I nicked that a little bit. A little bit more parry and spirit. And then I'm going to hold it up a little bit with my thumb. I'm holding it up a little bit more. And now I can get this under. And I'm going to flip the whole thing over so that I can flick it off the rest of the way. And there we have it, completely out. I'm going to turn this upside down. And I'm going to put, this is not the correct sticker. I'm going to just put the sticker on while the glue is there. You could do the same thing if you're doing a magnet. And now I have that whole piece out. And that was five minutes to get this one done. So just five minutes, I got it out, 
That little nick again is from a previous attempt before I found Grishan Roof and learned what I was really doing wrong. And then this fits also in the Makeup Geek without being touched. And actually I think four would fit in it really nice. So I'm gonna close that. You can see that this is kind of damaged right here. So because this is plastic, for the plastic, you can only use eyelash glue if you want to re-adhere the product into this pan. Reset, start. Let's just do that. And let's try doing bronze light. Now if you have something with any little bit of weight to it, you can stick it on top. And again, we're at 20 seconds, so when we get to about two minutes, I will pull it off and we'll go again. So I'm gonna take off the blue sticker. And this is Golden Bronze Light. And while that goes, I'm gonna actually pull out, whoop, and leave it there, we want that to really heat up. Pull these out because these, I want to switch out to a magnet, all three of them, because magnet is gonna be a better fit for my purposes. I'm just gonna cut three magnet strips. It doesn't take a lot of magnet and again, you could just get these pre-done. That would work as well. And now I'm gonna use a sharp X-Acto knife and just remove as much of the label as I can. Because again, these are just repurposed magnets. Flip this over. I did decide this wasn't quite what I wanted to do. I can reuse these I'm just, I'm just gonna slide this around in a circle. I think this is helpful too to see if you get it wrong, what do you do? This terracotta is pretty sturdy, so you can just pull that off. And now I'm going to write strobe blush brilliant nude directly on the terracotta. and I can tell how hot everything in front of me is getting. This is actually getting really hot. Brilliant nude. And now some lash glue. Wrong one, we're gonna put some lash glue on here. Kind of spread that around. Unlike eyelashes, you do not need to wait for it to set. It will dry clear as well. And that's what you do. That's how I like mine because I do want to be able to see the shade. But you can play with that and do it the way that suits you. Close this. We're at 3 minutes and 18 seconds. We're going to turn this off. I bet we're good. All right. The back of this by the bronzer is really hot now. I think I've got a little wider spot with this bronze. And so I'm just going to get the Parian spirit in there. Oh yeah, this is moving really well. So yeah. Three minutes, feels really good. And then this narrow palette tool. I know that doesn't look like much Perry and Spirit, but this stuff is amazing. And it will not hurt the makeup. Oops. 
little bit of operator error. I'm a little bit on the shaky side. Okay. Really making sure you're all the way down to the bottom. This is bending the plastic. Excuse me. There's where the glue is going to give right here. And you can see this whole plastic piece is just moving. That did not happen when I was doing the smaller. The smaller ones didn't do that. There we go. There's the glue lift. And then slide it in. And then it really releases very, very quickly once you do that. And then I'm not even going to take the sticker off. I'm just going to stick this on. And the good thing about these two is when they're hot, if you do any damage, you can really press hard and press back in this baked product. It's kind of nice that way. So now I have those two there. And now the only one left to remove is going to be my soft light, which is so crazy to me. I cannot believe this is going to be coming out. I think this one needs some time with some heat. Normally I want to keep the packaging available. This is the only one that I had that I was fine with completely losing the packaging. Especially the metal ones, I think it's really nice if you can get butterfly, tiger, and elephant and then rearrange them to be what would be more suitable for maybe your skin tone or your personal preferences or to get rid of some of their ridiculously redundant shades where they put in like almost identical shades in some of those. You know what I mean. Okay, this is not coming easily. I don't want to break. This is my favorite shade. I don't want to break it. And so I'm going to put Perry and Spirit. Down inside. Okay, and then I'm going to use some heat. And especially because soft light isn't available as a single, so this is exactly the solution that I'm looking for. I'm going to go ahead and reset the timer. Another two minutes. And while this is going, I just put a tool on top to hold it in its place and I'm going to get these two labeled while I wait on that. Very easy to remove that sticker and then the shade here is strobe blush in vibrant heat. So I'm going to utilize that glue right there because this heat is hitting it. It's going to re-soften soften that glue. Strobe blush vibrant heat and then this one is going to be blush not even strobe, just regular blush in surreal effect. So I'm just going to write. Did they do anything weird? No. Never know, there might be a weird spelling, right? And then let's remove 
I'm done with this. And I'm going to take this one and remove the little blue plastic sticker. And we're going to write soft light on this metal sticker. We're at two minutes, so we're going to turn this off. These I'm just going to move a little to the side. I'm going to keep them face down to just keep them protected. And while their glue is hot, I'm just going to try to put this on. Well, I can come back to it. Let's go ahead and just do this and move on. Okay, so some more Parian Spirit into the widest gap I can find. work my way around. You don't know where their glue spot is, so I like to just really try to loosen it from multiple angles. So we're going to go over here. I feel like I can get in right here. Yes. Nice. I was afraid that was going to happen with this style. This is why I don't like to use exacto knives and now you're seeing me damage it. all right so that one is too tight right there but we're gonna use that little wedge and we're gonna lift this out of course it would be the one shade I really wanted and this is why I was saying to you don't force it if you can't get it don't force it just a little bit more parry and spirit and a little bit more time, sometimes a little bit more heat. I feel like this shade is just like, I don't know, really glued in or something. All right. If you have an adjustable X-Acto knife, the nice thing too is you don't actually have to have it extended as much as that one was. Yeah, this is so tight right here. And you can see this really can take that pushing and pulling more than an exacto knife if you can get it to fit there's <laughs> all right so don't worry it's totally intact that is a huge glue spot they don't usually do very much glue and especially on the large, smaller pans so you just have to be a little bit more aware, I guess, on these slightly larger pans. But I'm super excited to get it out. I now have soft light right here. This is my favorite finishing powder from them. And so I can put that in there. Although what it's probably going to get is its own individual Makeup Geek single like this. This is probably how I'm going to end up using soft light is in something like that. And you can see those still fit, but that is a more used powder. So this is the bronze light, which I haven't used hardly at all. And that is touching. I think it closes, but it is definitely touching. So these taller ones may not fit. You may have to get creative or go with a Mayo. So I hope that that helps. I hope that you have fun coming up with some decluttering, decanting, because you certainly can reduce what you own if you have the ability to rearrange it. And then really just keep the shades that you love or even just switch out with other 
events, switch out for different seasons. It's really nice for travel as well. Pull that off. I put these on the last two and then I will be done. This is all bent up. I do have a sharps container and I'd really encourage you, especially if you have kids in the house, be careful with your blade disposal. But if you already do crafts, you already know that I shouldn't have to tell you. If you're just new to crafts, then be careful with your blade disposal. Again, any lash glue. I'm just using lash glue that I happened to have like a sample of. And yeah, so they even make like a magnetic lash glue. I haven't tried that in this format, but here we go. And I have my hourglass palette right here. And so I can just take this magnetic one, stick it in, it doesn't fall out, and I'm ready to go. You can play with it, see what you think, but that is all for me right now, and I hope that that was helpful. Have a great night.